you may remember from calculus that it is often not that easy to establish whether a function is one-to-one -one or not. In the case of a linear transformation, you have an easy criterion. You'll see it in the first theorem of this video. Uh, something similar holds for the codomain versus the range of functions. Determining the range of a function in, in general in calculus is very difficult. And again, in the linear case, you sometimes have an easier criterion, as you'll see in the second theorem of this video. First about a one-to-one. -one. If you have a transformation from V to W, T linear, that's important, only holds for linear transformations, then T is one-to-one, -one if and only if the kernel of T is only the zero vector. So transformation of one-to-one, -one, for that you only have to look at the kernel of T. If it only contains a zero vector, your transformation is one-to-one, -one. and if your kernel contains more vectors, then your transformation is not one to one. So we have to prove two implications. Uh, first we prove that if, uh, going from left to right, if uh, the t is one to one, then we prove that the kernel of t is only the zero vector. So take some arbitrary vector, the kernel of t. Then we uh, know, of course, uh, t of v is zero. And now we have to show that this only holds if v is zero. But t is linear, so we know for linear transformation we always have t of zero is zero. Now, your transformation by assumption is one to one. So if you have some other factor mapping to zero, t is one to one, so only one factor can map to zero. Zero is already mapping to zero. So if you would have another factor, t of v mapping to zero, then that v of vector v also has to be zero. So if you combine that, then you know if uh, v is in the kernel of t, that means your v has to be the zero factor, it's only factor mapping to zero, so your kernel of t consists only of the zero factor. Now the other way around, a bit less trivial maybe. If your kernel is trivial, if your kernel only consists of the zero factor, then your transformation is uh, one to one. This only holds, uh, by the way, for linear transformations. Look, for example, in calculus, f of x equals x squared. Then the, the kernel of the uh, function is uh, just uh, uh, zero, only zero maps to zero. However, if you have this domain all of R, this transformation is uh, not one-to-one. -one. So this is quite special that knowing that uh, the information about the kernel tells you immediately that your whole transformation is one-to-one. -one. Not only is uh, only one factor mapping to zero, but it immediately means that uh, uh, all image points have at most one original. So why is that? Now suppose we have t v1 equals t v2. So then we have to show that v1 has to be equal to v2. So in particular that means t v1 minus t v2 equals zero. And now we use the linearity. That's very important here. Uh, we can take out the t. That means that the image of v1 minus v2 equals the zero factor. And now we know that v1 minus v2 is in the kernel of t, because v1 minus v2 maps to zero. Uh, so then we have uh, v1 minus v2 in the kernel of t. Now, we are given that the kernel of t is only the zero vector, so if v1 minus v2 is in the kernel, then v1 minus v2 has to be the zero vector, so v1 equals v2. So if t v1 equals v t v2, then v1 has to be equal to v2. So t is one to one, and already only the kernel only looking at the kernel tells you whether transformation is one to one or not. Now the second theorem about the on two part. Uh, for that we have a theorem if the dimensions of, of V and W are the same, the dimensions are both M and then uh, one to one and on two are equivalent. T is one to one if and only if T is on two. And why? Why is that? Well, T is one to one if and only if the kernel of T is uh, uh, only the zero factor should be the set over here. Uh, so the nullity of t is zero. The dimension of the kernel is zero. Uh, then we can compute the rank of t. And the rank of t equals uh, the dimension of v n minus the nullity zero equals n. So the rank of t uh, is so this is equivalent to rank of t being equal to n. But if the rank of t equals to equals n, you have a full rank, so the uh, range of t has to be equal to w, because the dimension of w also equals n. 
So at a range of t is all of w, you can reach any point. So t is onto. So in the case uh, where dimensions of v and w are the same, and uh, if your and if your transformation is linear, then uh, one uh, transformation is one to one, if and only if it's on two. So one one to one and on two, then in that case common pairs. You are either both or neither of them.